let's load students from local storage. We'll call it load. Don't forget your comma. Let's make sure that we call this thing from init. And what's it going to do? It's going to get these rascals from local storage. So we know we're going to have local storage dot get item roster. And what's that going to give us? What kind of thing is it going to give us? What's the data type going to be? It's going to be a string, not an array. How do we turn it into an array? JSON.parse. So then we have an array. So then I guess we could say this.students equals that. Let's see. Refresh the page. What's in local storage right now? All these guys. I'm calling load from init. Load does this. It's called roster. Refresh the page. What's this dot students? Undefined. What? Local storage, get item roster. It's a thing. JSON.parse, local storage, get items, get item roster. An array of object, object, object. This.students is that thing. Let's make sure this is even running. Console log, loading. Fresh. So it says loading. Not this dot students, moron. Mega roster dot students. I'm not inside the object. Yeah, we got it. But I don't see them. So we loaded them up in the array, but fat lot of good that did us. And uh, what happens if we say clear out local storage? Local storage clear. Refresh the page. Okay, didn't explode. Not yet, anyway. But what is mega roster? That's students. It's null. So if I tried to add somebody, I'm trying to call unshift on null. So we probably better make sure there's actually something there before we overwrite this dot students with it. So we need a step in between. So let's say const roster string or whatever. We could we wouldn't have to do that many steps if we didn't want to, but we can. Roster string equals local storage get item roster. Const roster array is json parse roster string if roster array this dot students equals roster array How's that? So right now, in local storage, I got nothing. But it didn't explode. Mega roster students is still an empty array. Great. Now they're still not in my dang list. So we have to write all that again. No, we're going to try to reuse what we already wrote. Let's have another look at add student. OK, first it does some form related stuff. It prevents the default thing. It grabs the form. It makes a student out of the form data. It throws it on the beginning. 
then it makes the list item and adds it to the list and increments the ID. So what if, I mean, most of that stuff we need to do when we get it out of local storage too, right? So what if add student could work for either scenario, whether you're adding it from a form or adding it from local storage? So maybe handling the form submission and adding the student to both the list and the array should be two separate operations. How do you feel about that? So we can make a separate event handler. We could call it handle submit or something, but that's a little generic for my taste right now. Well, let's call it add student via form. And it'll take an event. It'll prevent default. Save the form to a variable build a student out of there, and then it'll call add student and pass in that object. Then add student will take a student taking the event. See where I'm going with this? Now, this thing also resets the form, so that doesn't belong here anymore. That belongs up here. Don't forget your comma. Now we need to make sure that it's running the right method when the event fires. So add student via form. Way back up here, we have our setup event listener. This dot add student is now this add student via form. We still need to bind this. Otherwise it would be the form. First of all, does it still work at all? Yes, okay. Now what if when we load, we get this array, and then we loop over the array. And for each item in the array, we call add student. Hmm? Instead of setting this dot students, that'll automatically happen as we run add student, right? Because add student's already doing that. It's adding it to the list, and it's adding it to the array both. So let's try that out. We can make another for loop. But we know all about map, so let's use map. Do you remember what map does? It calls a function for every item in the array. And it returns another array containing the return value of that function. But we don't care about the return value right now. We just care about the fact that it'll run the same function for all of them. So what's that function? We could write our own here. Uh, we know that the first argument to map will be the item in the array. And then we could do something like this dot add student student. Or since that's the same argument that this add student takes, we could just call, we could just not call, but pass in this add student to map. And then map will call it, and it'll pass in the right argument. What do you think of that? Seem legit? Let's try. So this should happen as soon as I load the page, right? Because load runs right away. Explode! Cannot read property unshift of undefined. Line 39. This dot students unshift. What? Why is this dot students uh, undefined? Why is it undefined? Who knows why it's undefined? This should be an empty array then, right? It's this undefined nonsense. Well, what's this? What's this? What's console log? 
this. Clear our log, refresh the page. Window? What? Why would I ever want it to be window? That is useless. What gives? Methods usually bind this to the object that they're methods of. But when we throw, we didn't, we didn't say this adds student parentheses, did we? We just passed it as a callback to map. So when map calls it, it's not going to call this dot add student. It's going to take this function that we passed in and call it directly, which is going to make this window. So we could bind this here. And that would do it. Refresh the page, there they are. We could also do what I started to do earlier. Write our own arrow function. And have that arrow function call this.addStudent. Why does that work? So why is this the right thing inside the arrow function? Because that's what arrow functions do. They bind this to whatever this was in the surrounding context. And then, since we're invoking add student ourselves, using the dot syntax, we're calling it as a method, this gets bound automatically to the object on which we called the method. So this would do it too. You can do it either way. As my Mississippi relatives would say, it's just with y'all. Means it's up to you. You like this? We'll do this way. Either way works. Refresh. Yep, there they are. But look, look what's happening. They swap orders every time. Why do they do that? Why do they do that? Add student uses unshift, so it adds everything to the beginning of the array. Now in local storage, they're in the order we want them, right? So then when we call map, we're looping through them in order and putting them on the array in the opposite order. So we're putting them in backwards. What do we do about this? How do you want to handle it? What do you think, Pari? Got a plan? Yep. Store them backwards or write them differently. I see here two approaches. So storing them backwards would be pretty easy. Or we could reverse them before we add them back after reading them. The thing is, like, the state of our data, it would be correct for the state of our data to have them in the order they appear on the page. So I kind of don't like storing them backwards because there could be something else that relies on them being stored in the correct order. So, you know, the fact that, you know, it's, it's just a presentation thing. Um, And you are, are you another Sam? Yeah, yeah I mean, I swear. So we could reverse it before we call uh, add student. Think that's hard? So before we do this map, what if we say dot reverse? Can't be that easy. Refresh, it's the same, it's the same. Yep, it's that easy. So again, that's kind of a long chain of things. So I'm gonna do it this way. Why does chaining this work? Reverse returns an array, and then we're calling map on that returned array. Cool. Get rid of one, load it back, it works.
All right. Uh, what was my last commit message? Now, oh, why am I going out there? I have my trick. Control back tick. Git log. Remove students from local storage when removed from the list was the last thing. All right. So this time around, load students from local storage on page load. Let's add another one. Refresh. Let's look uh, at students. Make sure it matches. It does. Very good. 